hello guys welcome once again to our channel my name is Vilileni Ngozi today I'll be working on a previous question paper of life science here is the question paper so this paper uh, was requested by many students on our page so I've decided to make a video about it so here is life science grade 12 a much common test 2024 uh, it's question three this question is based on menstrual cycle so here are the questions so this is the information and then uh, the questions are here so if you want to try to answer this question you can pause this video now and then try to answer them before you see the solutions this will help you to see how far are you with your studies so without wasting more time let me get to it So here is the question. Uh, the, the question says the diagram below show the gland X and its influence within the ovary. So here is the diagram. We have a gland X. We have an ovary here. So here we are told that this is luteinizing hormone. This is LH. And then we know that LH is secreted by the pituitary gland. So that is mean this gland here is pituitary gland. So this is the pituitary gland and then another hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland is called FSH which is follicle stimulating hormone. So this line represents FSH. So this is FSH, this is luteinizing hormone and then in the ovary here we've got the primary follicles and then these follicles are stimulated by the FSH and then they start to grow until a uh, they become graphene follicles and then the graphene follicles is called is also releasing estrogen and the estrogen which is responsible for uh, thickening the endometrium inside the uterus so here uterus is not shown so but we, we must keep in mind that as the follicles are developing they release estrogen and then this estrogen the responsibility of estrogen is to take in the endometrium uh, of the uterus or the uterus wall and then the in another information as the follicle has grown to become graphene follicle the brain will release luteinizing hormone so the luteinizing hormone will cause the graphene follicle to release the egg or the ovum so this is this process is called the ovulation the ovulation is caused by the luteinizing hormone so b uh, b is ovulation and then after the ovulation this follicle will tend to become a corpus luteum so lh is the one that is responsible to convert this ruptured follicle to corpus luteum so number a is corpus luteum So number A, it's corpus luteum. This is the, the brief explanation of the menstrual cycle inside the ovary. And the corpus luteum will secrete progesterone. And the progesterone is the one that is further thickening the endometrium. So let's get to the questions. Question number one, 3.1.1 say identify uh, number A, gland X. So gland X, we say it's a pituitary gland. So pituitary gland 3.1.1 number b say identify part a so part a it's corpus luteum so number b corpus luteum so number b is corpus luteum so going to the next question so the next question say apart from the process b state one function of the luteinizing hormone so we say the process B, it's ovulation. So we know ovulation, it causes by luteinizing hormone. So but another function of the luteinizing hormone is to convert the ruptured follicle to the corpus luteum. So this is another function of the LH. So here, it converts the ruptured follicle into corpus luteum.
so this is another function of the lh it convert the ruptured follicle into corpus luteum and then go into the next question so 3.1.3 say explain the effect that the corpus luteum defect will have on the developing embryo so here we must explain what happens if the corpus luteum is unable to produce enough progesterone like i say the function of the progesterone is to further thicken the endometrium so it takes over from the estrogen and then it further thicken the endometrium so if it's unable to produce enough progesterone so the endometrium will not be further thickened so number 3.1.3 so endometrium will not be further thickened so endometrium will not be further thickened and then if the endometrium is not been further thickened so we, there won't be any implantation so to cause pregnancy so there are no implantation so the plastocyst the plastocyst will not be implant implanted on the endometrium since the in endometrium is not further thickened and then this will cause a miscarriage these are the things that will happen if not enough progesterone is secreted so endometrium will not be further thickened and then no implantation and then miscarriage will okay so this is the result of less progesterone so going to the next question and the next question say central hypogonadism is a condition that happen when a pituitary gland does not release enough a luteinizing hormone and fsh so explain the effect that the central hypogonadism may have on the uterus so we know that fsh and the lh are very important in the menstrual cycle so if the the pituitary gland is not releasing these hormones so the follicles will not be developed so let me start by say if less fsh is secreted in, in the pituitary gland so the level of fsh in the blood will decrease so it decreases the fsh level in the blood and then as the level of fsh in the blood decrease the follicles will not be developed so there won't be any development of the follicles and then this will lead to decreasing in estrogen remember as the follicles are developing they will secrete estrogen so if there is no development of the follicle estrogen will decrease so so the level of estrogen decreases in the blood so if the level of a uh, estrogen decreases that is mean there won't be any thickening of the endometrium then that is what happened inside the uterus so there won't be any thickening of the endometrium so the uterus wall will not be thick so this is what will happen if somebody is suffer from central hypogonadism so it will decrease the fsh level in the blood no follicle development so there will be no follicle development and then if the follicles are not developing the level of estrogen will decrease in the blood and then as the level of estrogen decreases then there won't be any thickening of the endometrium in the uterus so this is the result of central hypocanidism so this is all for this video uh, i hope i have explained everything so if there is something that you want to know you can ask in the comment section then i will be happy to help so everyone who is studying i say good luck with your studies thank you very much